committee meeting for Wednesday, September 18, 2019. We'll be called to order. Roll call. Call in the roll, Mr. Tuma. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. Ms. Conwell. Present. Mr. Shron. Mr. Shron is absent at the moment. Ms. Baker. Here. We have a quorum. Okay. Um, is there any public comment this morning? No, no one is signed in. Okay. And if we could have approval of minutes from the July 31st, 2019 meeting. Motion approval. Motion to approve. Second. And we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the 2000, uh, July 31st, 2019 meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And Madam Clerk, if you could please read the first matter referred to committee. Resolution number 2019-0173, declaring the public convenience and welfare requires re rehabilitation of Bishop Road Bridge number 01.78 over the east branch of Euclid Creek in the city of Highland Heights. Total estimated project cost $1,800,000. Finding that special assessments will neither be levied nor collected to pay for any part of the county's cost of said improvements. Okay, and if you could please state your name for the record. Nicole English with Public Works. So this is the first step in our process to start a project. Um, this is Bishop Road Bridge over the Euclid Creek in Highland Heights. It is uh, uh, in pretty bad shape. It's posted with a load limit currently. Um, the box beams are in bad condition, giving it a general appraisal rating of four. So it's in need of repair. Um, it's also next to a UPS facility, so it sees some heavy trucks going over it. So we're looking to start this project. Um, it will be design build. So you'll see later on the agenda, there's a right away already that we're going for, and that's because this is sort of a fast track project where we design a very small amount up front, and then we put it out for a design build contract, which we're anticipating um, in January of 2020. The estimated cost is 1.8 million, and it's um, a county bridge, so it is being paid out of county road and bridge funds. Okay, and um, so what is the estimated start date for the project? So we anticipate selling the, the design build contract in January 2020, and they'd probably start construction in the summer of next year. Okay. Um, and uh, so when you assessing, since Mr. Schron's not here, I'll ask these questions. No. Um, so when assessing this, this project here, so the condition of the bridge, um, you said it's in poor condition. How did you guys rate that? Correct. Four. Um, so the lower the number out of 10, um, the worse it is. So four is pretty bad. And then it does have a posted load limit right now. So that means it cannot handle oh. a full load. So um, if you have a you know, fairly heavy truck, you might have to okay. avoid this route. Okay. Uh, I'll open up to any questions from my colleagues. Any uh, question? Through the, through the chair to Nicole, so you said uh, the safety. So what? how are we controlling those safety measures right now since you said it's, it's determined to be bad that we don't have a truck? What do we do in those So we do have signs up that, that um, before the bridge that let the trucks know that there is a load limit of a certain amount, and so they know their weight, and if they can't go on the bridge, they have to avoid it, and they go on a detour. So those are posted. Um, the city's made aware of that. Um, you know, it's not every truck, it's just significantly heavy. I don't know which um, exact load it is, um, but they're posted and these happen around the county at different times. When we inspect bridges, and if they're not to the full um, load limit, then we would have to post them to say that if you're a truck over a certain um, tonnage, you know, you have to avoid the bridge. So we've never had a problem in, in the past where trucks try to slip on by? They could. Um, you know, it's fairly conservative in the way we uh, do the bridge inspections. It's not like we're policing them. The local police does know, though, that there's a load limit, and so they look out um, for them. But again, we're not out there policing it, um, but we do put the signage up. Now, if they were to go over and something were to happen, I mean, that could be on their insurance then because they've chosen to go over the, the okay. bridge. And where is this bridge at? Is so I'm taking there's on people underneath the bridge? It's over so a branch of Euclid Creek. In oh. Highland Heights. Okay. So it's like a small waterway. Okay. Okay, any further questions? Okay, seeing none. Um, the, I see this um, requesting um, under suspension. Correct. Okay, and um, I'll make that motion since this is a uh, bridge in need of repair. Um, so I'll make a motion to uh, put 2019-0173 um, second reading suspension. All those in favor say, or could I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Okay. And Madam Clerk, the second uh, resolution. Resolution number 2019-0174, authorizing an amendment to contract number CE1600245 with Burgess and Nipple for design injuring, 
Design Engineering Services for Improvement of Pleasant Valley Road Bridge Number 09.68, 09.03, and 09.35 over the Cuyahoga River, Canal Road, and Ohio Canal in the City of Independence and Village of Valley View for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $2,404,474. Okay, and uh, just your name for the record. Nicole English with Public Works again. So this is a design contract um, with Burgess and Nipel for Pleasant Valley Road Bridges. This is number two. Um, we initially scoped the project as just one bridge um, because that's what we had federal funding for. We then got notified that we received federal funding for the second bridge, um, which was eligible. And so we decided these bridges are within um, you know, about a half a mile of each other. So we we're going to design the project all together. So the second, the first amendment to this contract was to include preliminary engineering for all the bridges. Now we're coming back for part two for all the bridges. This is a, you know, typical on complicated bridges that we come to you for a part one, part two, um, because initially when they scope it, they don't know what kind of bridge they're, you know, building. So we don't want to um, scope something up front that we don't know what they need to um, build. So this is the part two of the design. It's final design. This should get us to a biddable set of plans that we can construct. This is scheduled for construction in 2022, so we have um, a little bit of time, but we uh, do need to get through environmental. This goes through the national park system. Um, we're dealing with um, a couple different cities, so it's a, a little bit complicated um, to get through this point. They were selected initially um, through an RFQ process, um, and they scored the highest, and they are meeting um, the 30% SBE with this um, part two as well as what they did on the first parts. Okay, um, so just for clarification, so this this is actually a uh, amendment of a contract um, for, uh, for a design contract for a, a second bridge in this. Yes, area? the original they they were originally selected just to do the one of the bridges, the okay. big bridge that we had federal funding for. When we came for Amendment One, which already was passed. Right. Um, uh, in 17, September of 17, that's when we were notified and we added all the bridges together for design work. And then now that we're coming back with Amendment 2, this is final design for all three of the okay. bridges. Okay, so it's for all three bridges. Correct. Okay, any questions from my colleagues? Just one. Okay, well, Miss um, Conwell and then Mr. Miller. To the chair, to Nicole, just, just real quick. Over time, I've noticed these numbers, 09.68, and are those just numbers you attributed to different bridges? So they're mile markers based on, so where the where the road enters the county, it starts at 0.00, .00 and then as you go up, um, it's mile markers. So this is at, you know, mile 9.03, 9.35, 9 9.68. So that's telling you, um, you know, this is all within a half a mile, um, okay. about three quarters of a mile stretch of each other. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Miller? Mr. Chair, Ms. English, how many people bid on this? The original was 12. 12 proposals were submitted originally, and one was selected. And that was back in um, December of 2016. And was this bid on, was this determined on price or on qualifications? It's engineering services, so just qualifications. Price was not a factor. And, uh, if the engineering is itself is two million four hundred thousand, what's the total estimated project cost? Twenty-two million. <laughs> and and uh, pretty big. Do we have funding in place for it? And if so, what is the funding? We have federal funding uh, at eighty percent for two of the bridges. I believe we're up to. Um, I can't tell you. The, I don't have the exact number on the the federal funding. Um, just over 10 maybe, and then we anticipate um, getting issue one money to cover a part of the, the remainder. So one bridge is not eligible, it wasn't eligible for federal funding, this is through the CEO, you know, and they do the worst bridges first, so mm -hmm. it has not rose, risen to their um, ranking, but two of them had. So we feel that we have an economy of scale to just do all three of them at one time. Um, so two of the bridges are federally funded, the third one is on us right now. Um, and then we'll, we'll go for issue one money to cover some of it. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. And I see you're looking for a second reading suspension on this as well. We'd appreciate. Okay. And uh, I'll make that motion for second reading suspension for uh, resolution 2019, or 2019-0174. Do I have a second? One <clears throat> so more have, question. Oh, one more question. We have one more question before that. Uh, 
Was there an engineer's estimate on this, and, and if so, what is that? We don't have an official engineer's estimate on the engineering, per mm -hmm. se, um, but this is in line with what we would expect mm -hmm. um, engineering to cost, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 percent of the construction costs. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's in line. Okay. Okay, so I have a motion and a second out there. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it. And Madam Clerk, if you could read the uh, next resolution, I understand that these next one, two, three, four resolutions are companion pieces, but we'll read them separately. Resolution number 2019-0196, making an award on requisition number 44111 and authorizing a purchase and sale agreement with the Vallejo Company in the amount of $550,000 for sale of Brook Park Road Maintenance Yard. Okay, and if you uh, could state your name for the record. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Michael Dever with the Department of Public Works. Thanks for having us here today. Um, if I was going to give some general comments on these four items that okay. are before you this morning. This is in regards to our uh, overall property consolidation effort uh, in regards to the, um, the maintenance facility. We had, uh, as you are aware, last year council approved uh, the purchase of the former RTA facility on Harvard Road and Newburgh Heights. <coughs> Uh, uh, subsequently, uh, council gave us approval also to do a design build contract on that property, and that project is underway and nearing completion. Um, this is the final phase of that is to now uh, dispose or uh, uh, the disposition of the properties that are moving into that new facility. So what we hope to do to today is to go through the process that we followed in the disposition of those properties. So if you have, um, uh, I have um, uh, our uh, a real estate consultant from Allegro are here with us today, so they'll come up and give you an overview of the process. And then if you have any general questions about just the project in general, uh, the RTA facility and how that's coming, should I say that, the consolidated maintenance facility, i got to get away from calling it the RTA, um, uh, we'll be here to offer the, some uh, answers to any of those questions that may come up. So thank you. Okay. Okay, welcome, and if you could state your name for the record. And uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Justin Hughes from Allegro Realty Advisors. Um, I'm joined here today with two partners from Allegro, uh, my colleagues Damon Tassif and Adam Gimbel. And as many of you know, uh, us at Allegro, we've had a great working relationship with the county for several years now. And I'm here today to discuss the process. Well, that excuse me, can I, does somebody have like a radio playing or something? Or Okay, okay. I just thought it was in my head. That's okay. Okay. No problem. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Could you just start over? Okay. Yeah, sure. All right. I thought I heard something. Like, what? All right. So my name is Justin Hughes, and I'm an associate at Allegro Realty Advisors. I'm joined today with two of my colleagues, which are partners at our firm Allegro, Damon Tassif and Adam Gimbel. Um, we've had a great working relationship with the county for a number of years now, and I'm here today to discuss the disposition process for four of the county-owned properties, um, which are the Brit Park Maintenance Garage, the Bridge Garage and Engineering Test Lab, the York Road Maintenance Yard, and the Sanitary Engineering Building. These need to be projected. Okay. Okay, so there's a presentation here then? Okay, all right. And we have this we have the sheets here. I don't know if everybody has them. Okay. Okay. Continue? Yep. Great. Um, I'll start by discussing the highlights of the RFP process, uh, and then I'll move into a discussion about each of the individual properties and conclude by giving a brief summation of all four transactions. Okay. Um, as I move through, I'll be moving pretty quickly, so if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to stop me and ask for more information. Okay. So the process slide um, basically shows the process. It gives highlight bullet points of what we use to solicit proposals for each of these properties. Uh, the public was initially notified of this RFP process through publications that uh, were published in the Cleveland Plain Dealer as well as Cleveland.com. Uh, from there, our team at Allegro, we um, took steps to further market the property. Uh, we did this by placing signs at each site, 
making phone calls and sending emails to local and regional uh, individuals in the real estate community. Uh, we posted the listing on our website, and then we also created public listings on a real estate database that has more of a national reach as well. Um, once there was a, an individual or a party that was interested, uh, we required them to register their interest through an RFP registration. This helped us track things for administrative purposes, but then also allowed us to grant them access to due diligence material. Uh, some of the due diligence material included things such as site plans, uh, photos of the property, utility information, capital improvement information, just things that would be helpful in them analyzing the property and then also putting together their actual proposal. We had two open houses for each of the four properties uh, that were announced in advance uh, once the RFP was published. And finally, the scoring committee met twice. Uh, the first time was a preliminary meeting to look at some of the responses and draft any clarification questions that we may have had. And the second time was to evaluate the responses to those clarification questions, as well as you know, create a final score for each of the properties. Moving on to the scoring, what you have in the handout in front of you uh, shows a scoring rubric, and this is how the proposals were evaluated. Essentially, this rubric gave us a way to evaluate each of the proposals on topics and substance other than just price alone. Um, we could reconcile some of the terms apples to apples and take a look at some of the benefits to the community, the transaction risk, price point, things like that, and have a, essentially a comparison tool. Uh, and that's what this was used for. Okay, just, just, oh, okay. Um, I'll get you in a sec. Just real quick, as far as your scoring goes, like what, what were some of the components that went, like what's the difference between like a 40 and a 15? Right. So essentially these um, scorings, these were all based out of 100 total possible points. Uh, we allocated point totals essentially uh, based on the strategic goals of the disposition. So as you can see here between the bridge garage, it's slightly different than the uh, scoring that was used for the other three properties. Uh, the, the main reason for that was the characteristics associated with the bridge garage. So for example, you know, it's a development site in a prominent area. Um, it has the ability to impact the surrounding areas in a way that the other three didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, we evened out some of the terms to you know, give a more holistic approach to scoring that as opposed to the other as opposed to the other, whereas, you know, purchase price was um, a predominant focus point of the scoring. Okay. Mr. Miller? My question was the same. You okay. covered it. All right. Great, great minds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so just another point based on this slide, the scoring slide. Uh, although we did allocate points in different areas, you know, and, take, and took a look at other terms and things of that sort, it's worth noting at the front end that each of the highest scoring proposals for each of the properties also coincided with the highest purchase price. So it was a great mix between those two things. Okay. And uh, just something I wanted to point out at the onset. Okay. So then moving into the individual properties. Uh, the first one that we're presenting is the Brook Park Maintenance Yard. Um, so this property was approximately 33,000 square feet and had about uh, 2.76 acres of land. Um, the garage was built in 1963. Um, once we brought out the proposals, we had 23 registrants that you know, asked for due diligence materials and registered their interest in the property. Um, and then finally, when it came down to the deadline, we had three proposals that, was, that were presented before us. And one of them was withdrawn throughout the, while we were going through the process of scoring. The highest purchase price um, was what you see before you for the Vallejo company at $550,000. Uh, their original offer was um, $460,000, but through the course of the negotiations, we were able to bring it up to the purchase price that you see before you today. Um, to give you a little more information about who Vallejo is, they're a local company that was founded in 1993, and they provide trucking and construction services. They have approximately 55 employees currently, and they plan on using the, the garage to expand some of their operations. Um, as part of their proposal, they also indicated that they anticipate approximately $760,000 of additional improvements that will be made to the building itself. Okay. Any questions on this? Yes. Mr. Miller? I think this question is more for the director, but the question is uh, whether the uh, money received from the sale 
simply goes into the general fund, or is there some more specific allocation? Uh, that direction right now, I think, is it will go in the uh, the general fund. Um, uh, the, the, you'll see towards the end of this the total purchase price of all all uh, four buildings. So um, I'll get clarification on that and make sure I get back to you with that answer before uh, final passage. And uh, Mr. Chairman, Director, while you're here, one other question. Uh, Besides these four properties, are there other properties that, that we're in the process of selling? And if so, what are they and, and where are they in the process? In regards to other properties, uh, we're constantly looking at our portfolio and what we need for now and into the future. So right now, there is nothing else that's on the table for, um, for disposition to get rid of. But um, as I had said, we're constantly looking at it, and and we'll make we'll try and bring forward, um, you know, rational decisions for for obviously this body to consider. Okay, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. You could proceed. Great. Uh, so moving on to the next property, um, it's the Bridge Garage and Engineer Test Lab site. Um, as you can see on your handout, it's approximately 1.6 usable uh, acres of land. Uh, we use this metric as a difference as opposed to square feet and things uh, of the building because we looked at this as more of a, a development site. Um, we received 33 RFP registrations for the property. Um, and then whenever, it, whenever the deadline came, we had two responses uh, that were received and scored. Uh, we took an extra step in this process, and that was an interview of the two proposals that came through and the parties uh, to just get further clarification as to their plans. Uh, finally, it was purchased by uh, Bridgeworks LLC for $4.15 million. Uh, it's worth noting that the original proposal that they placed in front of us uh, offered a purchase price of $4 million, uh, but that number came up through the negotiations. Um, this group that is essentially um, that that were the proposals the proposals here uh, are headed by Michael Panzica, Graham VC and Marika Shore Clark uh, to give a little more information briefly about their plans for the development um, there, it's a mixed use development that's offering 20 residential units and of this there's going to be a mix between affordable units which is about 75 that they have budgeted along with 75 market rate units, and then 50 additional affordable or micro units as well. Okay, any questions? Uh, yeah. Mr. Miller? Uh, where is this property located? So the uh, property is, uh, so the address is 2429 West Superior Viaduct. Um, it's right over by the Detroit Bridge. Okay, and just just to comment, this uh, this sounds like a good deal. We not only get four million dollars for a property that we no longer need, but we also get a get a nice economic development. Yes, and uh, just to the economic development piece, or you know, just the way that the score came out. Again, the scores were allocated on a, on a scale of up to a hundred points. Um, we came out with a final score of 95 for this, which included price, terms, the development, and impact to the community and, community and some of those other factors as well. Okay. All right, very good. Okay. So the next site that we have was the York Road Maintenance Yard. Um, the property size for this was about 12,000 square feet, um, significant portion of land, about 10 acres. Uh, it was built in 1975. For this particular property, we received 17 registrations from interested parties, and we had one proposal that was uh, placed in front of us at the deadline. That proposal came from the city of North Royalton. Um, so initially, the city of North Royalton um, had discussions and were asking for us to donate the property to, property to them uh, without a purchase price. But going through the process, they've came up to what you see here. Um, in terms of their proposal, they uh, also indicated that they were planning about $400,000 in uh, additional improvements. 
Um, the site currently has a, a baseball field on it as well, um, which is just another aspect of why the city was interested in purchasing it. Okay, any questions on this one, Miss Miss Baker? Two hundred fifty thousand for ten point one four acres doesn't seem like a lot for this property. Um, do we appraise these before we get started to to have a baseline? Sure. Um, so our group at Allegro, we ha we essentially um, do an evaluation on each of the properties. Um, we we did this essentially by looking at other properties in the area. The criteria that we use specifically for this transaction uh, was looking at Class C industrial buildings in the same geographic area, looking close at North Royalton and the Strongsville market. Um, we looked at also the year that they were built and how recently that they sold or were placed on the market. Um, to your point, uh, the evaluation that we came out with was about $21 up to $42. Uh, this came out uh, roughly around 21, 20 and a half, essentially, which is low on the lower end of that spectrum. Um, part of the reason we believe that is is because there's several encumbrances on the property. As I mentioned, there's a baseball field that has a lease that's going that the uh, you know purchaser would have acquired that subject to that lease. And furthermore, the property is zoned for uh, essentially public use. So if there was a private you know, individual or a company that wanted to purchase the property, they would likely have to go through um, a zoning change essentially with the city. If I just, just for clarification, 21, is that $21 a square foot? Is that what you're saying? Uh, correct. And the, the final price uh, based on this purchase price was $20.45. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, moving along. So next we have the Sanitary Engineers Building. Um, this property was about 29,000 square feet, um, and it had a, a, an industrial component as well as an office component. And the office component of that was uh, roughly 15,000 square feet as well. Um, I'm sorry, I, I was mistaken there. It was 29,000 square feet of office, and then the component that was associated with the garage was 15,000 square feet. Um, it also came with six, uh, six acres of land as well. Um, the building was updated in 1994, but built in 1973. So this particular property had 20 received uh, registrations, and then there were two responses that were received at the time of the deadline and then eventually scored. Um, okay. the, high, sorry. So, Go on. Sorry. the highest scoring proposal uh, was submitted by the Cleveland Metro Parks. Um, and to give a little more information as to uh, their intent with this building, they're planning to consolidate some of their other offices into this building. Um, and they're also, they're also anticipating a, a, an improvement investment amount of one, point, of $1 million to take place over the next five years as they consolidate into this space. Okay. Uh, questions on this property? Ms. Baker? Why do you think that, and perhaps I understand about the North Royalton, it's a zoned public use and Cleveland Metro Parks may be the same, but why do we receive so many RFP registrations for the property and only get two or three responses that are serious? Um, well, to that point, I think that there could be a number of factors that play into that. Um, so, for example, with three out of the four properties, um, they, were, they were more marketed towards owner occupants, which are strategic users. Um, and I think just from that standpoint, uh, you know, particular users of a property may have budgetary concerns. You know, this process might have been you know, six months too late for some who already acquired something. It could have been too early in terms of you know, their capital budgeting and things of that sort. Um, the relative, you know, there could also be off-market properties that some of these individuals were having conversations with with uh, owners, and they might know of some of those properties that are available or coming available in the future. Um, it could also be, you know, the, there might have been some unfamiliarity with this process of an RFP. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little different than what you would typically see in a real estate transaction. It requires uh, a little more effort on the front end to prepare a proposal and, you know, do a lot of your analysis up front, essentially. Um, so, so with those, I guess, those components, there could be just a variety of reasons. Um, I will say that, you know, to the extent that there were less proposes, proposals in front of us, um, there are some benefits to this as well in terms of having a strategic user. So, for example, with the sanitary engineering building, uh, Cleveland Metro Parks offered a purchase price of $59. 
um, per square foot, which is much higher than what we evaluated the property as. Uh, the higher mark of that was about $47 per square foot. And a reason because they are a strategic user, this property fits in line with some of their goals and you know, bigger picture strategic um, initiatives. So it, it made this uh, something that was more of a must have for them, I would say. And if I may follow, that was my next question, is whether or not with only two responses, I think one or two on each one, that you're satisfied, and it sounds like you are for the Cleveland Metro Parks, but you're satisfied with the dollar amounts for the rest of them, including the um, one for 550000 for the 33,000 square foot, 2.76 acres of land. You're satisfied with the purchase prices of all of them in uh, with the low response? Sure. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, and going to the conclusion slide, slide the next slide, um, we touch on that. You know, this was a robust process. Um, you know, and the, pur the proposed purchase prices that came out of this process met or exceeded the market expectations that we placed on the properties, um, all things included, and, you know, some of the encumbrances and things like that were factored into our evaluations. Um, and we've, we feel that these are fair purchase prices, and, and a lot of times they exceed what our evaluation was. Um, and again, this slide points at the total uh, for these four dispositions was $7.6 million. Okay. Okay. If I may ask just one. Sure. Do you, um, I don't know, just for a comparison, do you ever have outside appraisals on these just to check your appraisal to make sure that what you're appraising and assuming is what others also, do you ever double check that or? Sure. So in terms of um, double checking, what we'll usually do is double check between uh, individual members of our group. So the partners at our firm, I think combined experience, um, have a great deal of experience, not only in real estate, but in the local market. And they understand some of the nuances in, in these individual areas. Um, so a way that we kind of gut check ourselves a lot of times is, you know, showing them to other groups and people on our teams to see if that uh, coincides with what they believe the value would be as well. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay. Mr. Miller? Just a comment that I'm happy that it appears that we don't have anybody that's contesting the process this time. That, that, this, uh, uh, that, that gives confidence that we had a, had a good, clean process that everybody accepted as fair and, fair and responsible. Thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Conwell. To the chair, one question to the director. In terms of the sanitary engineers building, where were those staff moved to? Well, ultimately, that, that group, the sanitary, which is down on um, Rockside and Canal Road is where that facility is located. They're moving into the new consolidated maintenance facility. Okay. So our intent is um, by uh, uh, November 1st, the entire groups from the three, from the four buildings will be relocated into that facility. Um, the one group that did move, the PRC, was over at the Bridge Garage. They have been relocated to the West Shore facility at 98th and Lorraine, and um, that's turned out to be a, a great fit for them. Okay. Okay. So when do we expect the checks, I guess? When will this be all wrapped up? So our hope is that we close on all of these projects by the end of the year, and... Uh, I'm not sure where that would be then in regards to checks being cut. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, so three of the four will close this year, and, and probably the bridge garage will be just after the first of the year. Okay. Okay. Um, one thing about the Metro Parks also uh, uh, choosing this location, um, this is where they plan, as you, as you know, that they are the... Uh, uh, managers of the towpath. Um, they take care of that facility. So they plan on being this their central location to maintain the towpath, which is just outside their front door. Okay. Um, real quick, that $7.6 uh, million, this, you, you, right now that's going back into the general fund when we receive those funds? Uh, yes, and let me, let me just confirm that, and I'll make sure I okay. get back to you in regards to... Okay. Appreciate it. Any other questions for uh, either gentleman? Okay. 
on okay. this issue. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chair, yep. also uh, our hope is is that we could put this on second reading suspension to move it along. Okay. Um, oh, you, there's four of them, so we have to do each yeah, each right. individual resolution. So we can do that. If no one has any objection, um, I'll make them individually so we can keep it simple. Um, so for our 2019-0196, I'll make a motion for second reading suspension. Could I have a second? Second. So I have a motion and a second for second reading suspension. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Sorry about that, ESPN. Uh, thank you. Um, the ayes have it. Um, and Madam Clerk, if you could read um, the next resolution into the record. Resolution number 2019-0197, making an award on requisition number 44111 and authorizing a purchase and sale agreement with yeah. Bridgeworks in the amount of $4,150,000. Okay, so uh, we discussed this in detail, so I will make a... Uh, a motion for second reading suspension on R2019-0197. Could I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second for second reading suspension. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. Uh, Madam Clerk, the next resolution. Resolution number 2019-0198, making an award and authorizing a purchase and sale agreement with City of North Royalton in the amount of $250,000. Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion for second ring suspension on R2019-0198. Could I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second for second reading suspension. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And Madam Clerk, if you could read the next resolution in the record. Resolution number 2019-0199, making an award and authorizing a purchase and sale agreement with Board of Park Commissioners of the Cleveland Metropolitan Park District in the amount of $2,650,000. Okay, and with this one, I'll make a motion for second reading suspension R2019-0199. Uh, could I have a second? Second. So I have a motion and a second uh, for a second reading suspension. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. And Madam Clerk, if you could read the next resolution. We're starting fresh here now. So, Resolution number 2019-0200, making an award on requisition number 46078 to Lakeland Management Systems in the amount not to exceed $795,705.10 for the Courthouse Square Freight Elevator Modernization Project. Okay, and if you could state your name for the record. Hey, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Matt Reimer with the Department of Public Works. Okay, and if you could explain uh, the purpose of this resolution. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. The purpose of this resolution is to make a construction contract award to Lakeland Management Systems for the modernization of the Courthouse Square Freight Elevator System. This is an approved capital project on 2019 Capital Improvement Plan for Facilities. Uh, this is a modernization of the geared traction service elevator uh, on the Courthouse Square building. The Courthouse Square building was a 1918 building. This is an aged elevator system. Uh, the county purchased that building in 2003 and has full occupancy within all seven floors of the building. Uh, this modernization will replace the elevator car gates, improve code, uh, this will improve the safety, reliability, and code compliance aspects of the elevator system. Uh, it'll replace car gates, it'll replace pit access, access equipment, uh, the rear dock door, elevator controls, and electric disconnects, uh, the hoist machine, which is the main uh, hoist operator of the elevator system. It'll install mechanical room HVAC, it will replace the enclosure, or it'll repair the enclosure and the stairway systems to the roof-mounted elevator access room, mechanical room, and performs a lot of uh, masonry, plumbing, and electric uh, work uh, ancillary to, uh, to modernizing the system. Uh, this was a formal request for bid. It closed on July 16th of this year. We had one formal bid, Lakeland Management Systems. Uh, the bid uh, was at 795.705, which was 7% over the uh, architect estimate of 743,000. This was our second bid attempt on this project. We went out to bid on a formal bid. It closed in May 22nd of this year. We also only had one bid at that time. Uh, that bid came in at uh, upwards of $995,000, so we could not award uh, that that project. We uh, after that bid attempt. We went back to our uh, estimating team, our architect design team. We reevaluated our project, realized that we did not need to make any changes, and we went out to bid again, which resulted in the uh, in, in, a, in you know a lower reduction of what we're asking for here. Uh, this is within the appropriations that are uh, already assigned to this project of nine hundred and twenty-one thousand dollars, and asking for your support of uh, of this award recommendation. Happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, um, so first. Um, 
Why only one bid each time? Because of the spe- specialization or just a uh, difficult uh, project? Or what, why, difficult why do you think? project, old elevator system. Uh, there's only a limited amount of elevator vendors out there as well. But still, I am surprised that we did not get more because we did have more interest in the project leading up to the bid. But, uh, uh, but only one bid each time. And each, okay. each time it was the, the same uh, management company. Okay. Any questions for my colleagues? Uh, Mr. Miller? Did I read correctly that the uh, item is going forward even though the uh, intended diversity goals were not fully achieved? Uh, That is correct, uh, Councilman. The uh, diversity evaluation was that they met the SBE goal of 7%. Uh, They they had uh, some good faith effort uh, documentation submitted, but with vendors that were not uh, otherwise registered. So they were marked as non-compliant on the bid tab uh, from Office of Procurement and Diversity. Um, I will say that from my perspective, uh, that's not uncommon for these uh, largely single trade or limited trade uh, construction projects. Uh, Almost all this project was within the elevator system. It's very difficult to get um, to meet uh, aggressive diversity goals with some of those uh, single or low quantity trade uh, vendors, in my opinion. How was the decision made as to whether or not to proceed in such circumstances? Multiple bid attempts. This was our second bid attempt. This is a much needed project. Uh, We are at risk of not regaining certification of this uh, elevator system. It's critical to the building operations. And uh, uh, it's a project that has to be done. And now we've gone out on two bid attempts, only one bidder each time. And uh, we've got a good bid this time and time to move forward in my Technical opinion. Okay, okay. thank you. And if we, could, if we could hear, um, just please state your name for the record. Lenora Lockett, Office of Procurement and Diversity. I just wanted to add to what Matt stated. In this case, this was a formal bid. So for formal bids, we have a price preference. The price preference states that when they're, if the low bidder is not complying on the diversity goal, within a certain range, we can go to the next bidder that's compliant if they're within that range. In this case, there was only one bidder, so the price preference was not in effect for that option. Okay, Okay. thank you. Okay, and obviously, uh, given the fact that it's an elevator and we're trying to make sure everyone's safe and have accessibility to the building, we're looking for second rating suspension. And so- We would so request that. Yeah, I'll, I'll make that motion for second rating suspension. Okay, I have a second. second. Okay, I have a motion and a second for second reading suspension on R2019-0200. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, Madam Clerk, the next uh, resolution. Resolution number 2019-0201, authorizing an amendment to the design build agreement with Turner Ozan VAA, a joint venture establishing a final guaranteed maximum price in the amount not to exceed $240,610,443 for design bill services. Okay, and if you could state your name for the record. Nicole English with Public Works. Okay. So we're presenting, I know this sounds crazy because you've probably been in the hotel for a while, but a final on the uh, hotel now that the tunnel is completed and our warranty periods are over. So I have Jeff Applebaum from PMC who was our owner's rep okay. to do his presentation um, similar to ones that you may or may not have seen in the past, depending how long you've been around. Okay. Flip it up. So this button here, Nicole. Enter. Okay. Um, good morning. My name is Jeff Applebaum. I'm the managing director of Project Management Consultants. Two of you have seen a lot of me over the years, and two of you have not. Um, but what I'm going to do is give you. Uh, it's the basis for the amendment, but it's actually a recap uh, within five for five minutes, and it's going to have a uh, very interesting end slide that I'm going to share with you. So um, for some of you, uh, actually, I think only Councilman Miller goes back as far as this slide. Uh, at the outset of the project, um, we delivered, we brought this project forward. Uh, and immediately uh, upon presenting the project, one year was cut off the schedule uh, because we wanted to have this ready for the RNC. But this nevertheless was the initial project budget. And given the time uh, that we had in our methodology, the only thing that's important about this slide is the total development budget uh, from day one was $310 million. 
And the concept was we had an initial guaranteed maximum price for the builder. Then we had all these other components. That's furniture, fixture, and equipment, art, utility costs, soft costs. That's the architect's fees, et cetera. Uh, and contingencies. And the idea was, as we went through the process, we would convert, we would have alternates that we knew we wanted to put into the project, and as the money, as we, we got beyond risk points, we would then incorporate those back into the project as pre-planned, what are known as add alternates. So the idea was to take money from those three categories on the bottom, add them to the category on the top, but always stay within budget. And I know that uh, Mr. Miller and Ms. Conwell remember many presentations when I talked about how we did that. So uh, the last time I actually formally presented to council on the project was a month before we opened. Uh, and at that point in time, uh, where the project stood, uh, uh, we had converted uh, most of the allowances, or, or, or most of the contingencies, still had the, had the 310, but the number on top was larger as planned. Uh, the two of the, uh, we had three contingency categories. We had harvested those and bought a lot of extra things in the, in the project that we wanted to. Uh, the one big issue at that time was we decided, as you, as you may recall, to, to build a tunnel. So we had $10 million for the tunnel that we could still afford. When I made this presentation a month before opening, uh, what I basically presented was a subtotal uh, of actual costs known to be expended of $281 million. Uh, and, I, and a prediction that we would probably take another $3 million out of contingency, but we made an announcement at the time that was newsworthy that we were giving back $25 million of the project budget, and that was a very newsworthy thing, and everyone was very happy with that, but it was a prediction. Uh, since that time, what has occurred is a lot of things. We completed the tunnel. We had other things that we made sure were, were all put together. Uh, we had three years of solid operation, completed the warranty period, and now we're prepared to show you the final reconciliation of the cost. And the actual story here, as we anticipated, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the GMP did go up by $2 million. That was anticipated, and that's actually what this final amendment is. But in reconciling everything else, we, uh, we were able to uh, in, pull, in pulling out and finalizing allowances, et cetera. Many of our other costs actually came down, uh, including our soft costs in, in, in uh, working through with our architects, engineers, our utility costs, et cetera. So the bottom line is not only, and you can see this on the, uh, uh, the line item uh, that says subtotal, actually our total, rather than growing by $3 million, as we thought may be necessary for the tunnel, et cetera, it actually went down by $1.7 million. So the bottom line here is that rather than spending three more, we actually save 1.7. So the news story here, if there is one, is that no, we did not give back $25 million. We're giving back $30 million. Actually, $30 million, $253,000. And uh, just one more slide. I'll sh uh, and, and amendment number four, what you actually are considering is the action item on that $2 million right there. But that's one part of the picture. Okay. Now one more slide I'll show you. And, and by the way, there's a whole list of changes, pluses and minuses that go into that. We're prepared. And you have the whole list attached to the amendment. We can go into detail on any one of these, but uh, probably not really necessary because you've, you've seen the final result. You've lived it. You've been there. And, you, and it's well under budget. And I don't have the time to go through it because I have a five-minute limit. Uh, the, <laughs> the last thing I will tell you is that on the operations side, uh, that was our original operations budget from day one. We actually also are under on our operations budget. The only number there I can't tell you for sure is uh, interest costs during construction. Uh, on the bond issue, there are interest costs. Uh, that is what we believe they are, but we don't control that number. That's internal to the county, so you could confirm that, but we, we don't know of any reason why it would be different. So we think we actually saved $892,000 there. So here's the bottom line. The project was completed on time. Uh, $31 uh, million dollars under budget, open successfully. It's doing extremely well now. And the only other slide I'm going to show you, and I had an asterisk here um, on the slide before here. Notice on the soft costs, uh, we saved $1,199,000, and $447,000 of that is my organization uh, putting back $447,000. We were we gave back $447,000 of our reimbursable expense, so we were also under budget uh, for our part of the project as well. 
So that is, I didn't time it, but hopefully, I was told I had to be within five minutes. So if <laughs> you, there's, you any, great. So if there's any questions. That's good for Jeff. <laughs> yes, no, you did great. Yeah. You, um, you didn't have to explain to the new members my old problems about time, but that's, that's okay. right. Yeah. Right. You, the only thing you had to explain was on time and under budget. I, I'm not familiar with that. So. Yeah, okay, okay, so uh, any, any questions from my colleagues or comments? Mr. Miller? Mr. Chair, Mr. Applebaum, for, first of all, I would like to also thank thank you for the work that you're doing on the uh, on the Justice Center project. That's uh, that's a very significant undertaking, and I think we're heading in the right direction. So I I appreciate your leadership on that. Uh, my question on this, I'm I'm happy to. Uh, to hear about the end result, and my question is: Is where exactly does the thirty-one million one hundred and forty-five thousand eight hundred and fifty-nine dollars go? Uh, the chair to Mr. Miller. Uh, I think Mr. Miller knows that that I I I cannot answer that question. This these are dollars that we did not take out for the project that we provide back. And I don't know if you have an answer for that, but I, that is uh, above my pay grade, as they say. <laughs> uh, Nicole Thank English you. with Public Works. We'd have to confirm with OBM exactly where it is, but our understanding is it's not that money was put in a pot for the project. It was anticipated to use this money out of the quarter percent sales tax, that it was not used. So I don't think it's necessarily a give back of, right. of true cash. It's just an unused amount that was initially um, thought of that would have gone to the hotel. So it's just money in the quarter percent sales tax that we uh, anticipated might be needed for this project, but in fact was not needed, so that money just remains in that fund. Right, and I think at the time when Jeff talked about he came to present in that $25 million, you know, we had notified them that we wouldn't need the $25 million, so they didn't need to reserve that for us. So my guess is that money has been you know, allocated or, um, you know, anticipated to be used in some other manner um, up to that point. Now, you know, there was this additional monies that it's saying, okay, we're free and clear, now the hotel is done. We are continuing to pay a small amount. You know, we have an asset manager that manages the financials of the hotel, um, and then we also pay for operation of the tunnel that we built, which is, um, you passed an, an amendment to Hilton about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. which is around 5000 a month that we pay them. So there are some small costs that we continue to pay, um, out on on the hotel, although funds you know do roll back to us in profit, but that thirty million is not and, cash. And Mr. Chairman, to uh, Mr. Applebaum, as as I understand it, at some point in the future, we're going to need money for uh, for ongoing capital maintenance. Can can you say a little bit about uh, what you think it's is going to require and when it's going to be needed? Uh, uh, Chair to Mr. Miller, there is, in fact, as part of the project, there is a capital uh, fund which has been established. Uh, uh, it is our hope uh, that that is, in fact, uh, we, we don't know exactly the mechanism at the county by which that is uh, maintained. We understand that it is maintained. We understand that there can be nothing else that touches that fund. Uh, the dollar amount of the fund, or maybe you can, you can talk about where that is. Nicole English again with Public Works. So the bond trustee um, does handle, there's a waterfall payment that comes in. So when um, the Hilton pushes through profits to us, there's four buckets, I believe, that it goes into fill. There's a debt payment. There's ff &E reserve that will cover um, future maintenance, there's operational reserves, um, and I don't know what the final one is, but we could have, OBM works directly with our asset manager, which is CHM Warnick, and we're happy to come in and have them um, discuss exactly where we stand. They have projections, um, I believe out 10 years, that they're looking at and when there could be a cash insurgence that would be needed from the county, but they do have projections and we meet with them monthly um, to go over these. So we'd be happy to share any of that information with okay. you. Thank you. I would add one comment. Uh, so there is a, and I, and I can get you the actual numbers, I just don't remember them right now, uh, but we set that all up at the outset. We did an evaluation of what would be required, what's normal, uh, and there's, there's several times in the course of a project where you know 
that there's expenditures. For example, you know that carpet is replaced every seven years. Uh, you know uh, different systems. And we have all those, and uh, we also have a cap an asset manager that helps to manage that. Uh, it's similar uh, to what happens with the convention center. Uh, there was at one point in time a proposal that the management of both of those systems be, be uh, d done commonly uh, with the CCCFDC. That has not proceeded uh, uh, yet, but both of those are capital accounts that are managed and maintained and evaluated by an asset manager. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Conwell. Um, Jeff, so who inspects the, um, the tunnel? So I'm assuming that this, these four buckets that the money goes into uh, also, not just for the convention center and the hotel, but also the tunnel is maintained out of these funds. The, well, for the maintenance. Once, once again, uh, the tunnel, I mean, that's actually your, you should talk, speak to that. Yeah, that's an asset of ours. And so um, we would inspect it as part of our facility, similar to the tunnel to the, that connects the um, courthouse or the Justice Center and HPG. Um, we just have an arrangement with Hilton to manage it on a day to day basis because we don't want to be in there vacuuming and, you know, just minor maintenance and paying the utility bills. That's what they do for us monthly, but overall um, inspection and if there were to be capital costs, that would be part of the county's cost. And how often do we inspect it? Uh, annually. For maintenance. Okay. Annually, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Baker? Um, yes, and because I'm one of the newer people and I wasn't here at the time of the initial $25 million under budget and trying to kind of read through here for the first time, where was most of the savings that you appreciated for the $25 million? I mean, that's a huge amount of money to be... Um, to have a difference between what was budgeted and what was actual. So where where did that $25 million come from? Um, uh, this is a, well, thank you for the question. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a, a long and complicated answer. Okay. Uh, and, there and is an happy, option. But okay. let me just tell you, it was the process. So what we did, every element of this project was done on an open book GMP basis which meant every contractor, every nickel, every dollar, we looked at uh, uh, and the only thing we ever paid was an actual cost. Um, and so what happens is you start out with your initial budgeting process, you get your original dollars, your estimates. We had to have contingencies because we had to make sure that we could afford elements before we committed to them. So some of that contingency was there on purpose for future expenditure. You also have to understand that we cut a year out of the schedule. Uh, we were completely dependent on weather. We were completely dependent on a lot of factors. We had to have contingency to cover those. Uh, we did workarounds and we had very effective management of the project because we did what normally takes three years and two years. So most of it was having very precise understanding and we also had a situation where the, the construction manager agreed that its contingency that it would normally pocket, they agreed to do that open book and what they didn't use, they gave back to the county. Hmm. So we had a return of contingency. So it is, it's really just knowing the exact dollars that were spent and not having any spare dollars out there and having adequate contingency in case we needed it, we didn't need it, so we can provide it back. That's, that's a long-winded answer. Okay. Uh, and, and Mr. Ellis Katz, who worked with me, had a lot to do with the success of, of that process of, of how that worked. If I may, just a, was your normal contingency, was it 3%? I mean, what, what is what is your, con, just seems like a lot of money to be under budget. I just wonder what, where did you, was the, were the contingencies the, higher than normal? Were, or? Once again, part of the contingency was for contemplated spending. Yeah. Uh, it, is, it is typically the case, though, I will tell you, so this project started out around uh, at the very early concept phase. At the very early concept phase, uh, on, a, on approximately a $300 million project, at the early concept phase, a 10% contingency is yeah. not unheard of. Uh, the bottom line is, is that we, uh, you know, we also had a, a design contingency. Was it a little higher than normal? Yes, no question. And we explained that because we had higher risk than normal. Did we spend less of it than normal? Absolutely. Uh, we were very fortunate uh, not to spend those contingency dollars. And keep in mind, 
With our contingency, we bought a $10 million tunnel that was not even contemplated. Right. So I don't want to apologize for giving back so much money, uh, but it was really, uh, it was all open book. Uh, there was yeah. nothing hidden. Every, every dollar was known, and we presented countless times to the council and explained every dollar. And, and, and these are not hidden contingencies. We, we spelled these out from day one. Okay. I'm, Thank I'm you. Not I wasn't here at the time. It a, yeah. It was, I just very, it was a successful curious. project. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. okay. Appreciate that. Uh, any, any further questions on this? Okay, seeing none, um, thank you. I appreciate your presentation um, and certainly appreciate uh, a project that comes in on time and under budget, that's for certain. Um, so um, this is a request for second reading suspension on this or how are we doing? It's not? Okay, all right. Um, so then I'll just make a, a motion to uh, put this on second reading before the full council. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for second reading. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, and uh, the ayes have it. And Madam Clerk, if you could read the next uh, resolution in resolution. this marathon session. <laughs> resolution number 2019-0202, approving a right-of-way exhibit as set forth in plat number M-5038 for rehabilitation of Bishop Road Bridge number 01.78 over the east branch of Euclid Creek in the city of Highland Heights. Okay, and if you could state your name for the record. Nicole English with Public Works. So this is the same project we were talking about earlier with Welfare and Convenience, and normally these don't come together on the same committee, but what happened was with your summer recess, they were separated by a meeting, but they ended up on the same committee. So um, this is all um, the same bridge. There's one property owner that we have to buy temporary property from and relocate their driveway because their driveway comes in very close to the bridge where we couldn't um, build the bridge with their driveway in place. So it's accounting for um, trees that we're going to take out and we'll put in a temporary drive during construction and then put back their old um, driveway. The estimated cost is um, could be up to $50,000 um, just because we are taking out a significant amount of landscaping, their driveway, we have to put it back. Um, but it's only one property and it is a private um, commercial property. Mm -hmm. And it's about an acre of uh, land that we're taking for them during the bridge construction. So uh, because this is design build, we need to acquire the right of way up front before we sell the design build contract so that the contractor will know that he has the property available to use, which is why this is a sort of a faster than normal uh, track on this. Okay. Um, qu any questions on this? Yes. Mr. Miller? Is there agreement between the county and the property owner on the price, or is it still under negotiation? Not yet. So until we have this authority, we can't go talk to him. Um, mm -hmm. We do have an appraisal draft right now, which is around um, 45000 for the property. But um, we, we would hope that we could come to a resolution with him quickly. He is aware of the project, just mm -hmm. not of the appraisal yet. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Any follow-up? No? Okay. Um, I think... Uh, we're looking at what here as far as time. Um, a second reading would help us um, just to get this project moving towards that January sale. Okay. Um, just regular second reading. Or I mean approval on second reading. I'm approval sorry. on second reading suspension. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. Well, I'll make that motion so we can try to get this uh, process move, moving along. So I'll make a motion for second reading suspension on 2019-0202. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second for second reading suspension. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay, ayes have it. Okay, thank you. And Madam Clerk, uh, the next resolution. Did we change clerks? There's <laughs> a resolution. Resolution number 2019-0203, approving a right-of-way exhibit as set forth in plat number M-5041 for phase two of the reconstruction and widening of Sprague Road from West 130th Street to York Road. Okay, and if you could state your name for the record. Nicole English with Public Works okay. again. Um, this is acquiring right away for phase two of spray Road. Some of you may be aware that spray Road phase one has just gotten under construction. Um, so we've been um, designing phase two um, since we sold the last project, and now we're ready um, to acquire the right away. This is mostly residential properties with minimum takes um, that are mainly temporary. So they're very low dollar value takes. Um, the minimum that we offer someone is $300. It's anticipated most of these parcels will be that. Um, there's 149 owners on 156 parcels, but our right-of-way estimate is only $100,000. So um, you can tell it's you know fairly low um, dollar values. Like phase one, um, it was similar to phase one where um, most of the property owners signed um, right away. They realized that they want this project to come through. We're not really taking anything permanently, um, and it's just to 
be able to construct the road. Okay. Um, how many properties are we talking about? 156 parcels with 149 owners. So okay. some owners right. own more than one person. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Any questions on this? I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but okay. I see mm -hmm. that 50% of it is paid by the cities. Correct. Okay. Um, so the cities where the property is located in, they pay their right away, the other part of their right away cost. It, whereas the whole project is divided equally among um, how much work of the project is done in the four cities when we do the whole project, but the right away is actually um, muni specific. Okay. Um, and again, what, what type of time frame are we looking at on this particular resolution? Um, we'd appreciate second reading suspension just because of the break. We're a little okay. behind. All right, so I'll make a motion for second reading suspension on two thousand R-2019-0203. Could I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second for second reading suspension. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And Madam Clerk, if you could read the uh, last resolution. Resolution number 2019-0204, authorizing an amendment to contract number CE09-00629 with Shaker West Professional for lease of office space located at 11811 Shaker Boulevard, Cleveland. Okay, and if you could just state your name for the record. Yes, good morning, Chair Tuma, members of the Public Works Procurement and Contracting Committee, John Myers on behalf of the Department of Public Works. <clears throat> Mr. Myers, in this resolution... Uh, we are regarding... here today to seek your uh, approval for an amendment for um, a juvenile court. This is a satellite probation office. This is a second amendment. We've been at this location for a number of years. The lease expires at the end of this calendar year. Um, this is a satellite probation office located at 11811 Shaker Boulevard. Uh, it's for 47, 17 square feet, a five year, 60 month lease, um, and total amount of $412,755. Okay, and um, how how much is that per square foot? It's uh, in the first year, approximately sixteen dollars and fifty seven cents. This is a full service lease, and in this amendment, it also includes the electric for the first time. Um, so that's the breakdown. Okay, um, questions on this, Mr. Miller? How does the cost compare with what we're currently paying? Uh, to the chair, in response. Uh, there's a, 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 an increase, uh, the approximately 10% increase. Uh, there was no increase over the four, past five years. It was a flat rate. Uh, the largest part of that increase, though, larger than we would like, but is we now have included the electric mm -hmm. in the monthly rent as opposed to a separate bill. So that's about 80% of that 10%. And... Uh... Is the ten percent one time, or does it does it go up every year? Uh, that's the recognizes the first year. After that, then there's approximately a, a small two two plus percent increase every year. Okay, so it's up ten percent the first year and two plus percent each year thereafter. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions, Ms. Uh, Baker? Um, this is actually an option to renew. Correct, uh, Chair to uh, Councilwoman Baker. And is there another option to renew after this, or is there a new contract that will be negotiated? Uh, there is not an option. That we, um, Mr. Chair, to the uh, Councilwoman, we generally are uh, able to, to renew uh, should the court make the determination that uh, this is still needed as part of their services. They currently have satellite offices in Parma, Maple Heights, and this one in Shaker Square. Commensurarily to, we also have a six-month early termination clause should um, their needs change. So the first 2010 to 2019 was 10 years. Was that two five-year? Um, the chair to Councilwoman Baker, yes, two five-year terms. This is the last of the five? Yes. It also says change the scope of services. What scope of services have changed? It's sort of a standardized language, I guess, uh, Mr. Chair, to uh, Councilwoman Baker. Uh, we're including electric now, and the footprint has uh, changed somewhat. Um, so um, nothing, re nothing remarkable. Footprint has changed for more square footage? Uh, reduced square footage. We've reduced. tried to compact, squeeze them onto one floor as opposed to two floors. 
Uh, what was the square footage change then from one floor to the other? It went from about 6,700, Mr. Chair, to 4,700. Wow. And yet we're paying the same price, if not a little more? No, the, the overall price is down. Down. Per square foot was in uh, my response to Councilman Miller's question. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Um, and so I see this uh, expires in December. We're fine with uh, your full process, full Mr. Chair. Second reading. Okay, then I'll make a motion. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Smythe. I'll make a motion for a uh, second reading to the full council on uh, R-2019-024. Um, could I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second for second reading. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Um, is there any other miscellaneous business before uh, public works? Seeing none, uh, could I have a motion to adjourn? I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. And uh, Public Works shall adjourn at 11.13. Uh, <laughs> a.m.